goals, do you give something back to Utah somehow? Yeah, I actually donated um, uh, a little bit of money to the University of Utah to get a new locker room, so wow. I've been in touch there and um, speak to the coaches on a weekly basis and speak to a lot of close friends in Utah. And there's actually another Australian kid from... Um, He's from Perth, another seven-footer. We just signed with Utah, so... Okay, now, all right. The early <laughs> Carolina basketball there. Bandwagon. The bandwagon, hop it on the bandwagon. Now, I... I go... I come from a place called Fremantle in uh, Perth, Western Australia there, Andrew, and there's a bloke who lives in Fremantle at the moment. You might know him, and a few basketball fans might know him. His name is Luke Longley. And uh, there's been a bit of press back home between you and Longley as well. There's been a bit of action go down there. You're the highest ranked Australian ever to be drafted. I'm not quite sure where Longley came in or gaze. And uh, Longley sort of gone around saying, well, I've got a couple of rings or three rings or whatever he's got. What's gone down there between you and Longley? Any bad blood? Have you spoken uh, to each other since that? Or? No, definitely not. It's just been blown up by the media, yeah. as it usually does. Um, you know, the, the comments that I made were cut out to, to sound yeah. worse than they were. They didn't play the whole tape and... Uh, Definitely shouldn't have said some of those things I said, but the bottom line was uh, what I was saying is those guys have paved the way for guys like me. Yeah. But I, I don't think it's fair for, for for people to compare players to other players. You know, it's just not fair. It's yeah. like saying you can't compare Shaquille O'Neal to to a Jason Kidd. It's just not it's impossible. So that was my my point, and it just, yeah. it just came out wrong and made a mistake and learned from it. But I've I've got no bad blood with Longley. If I see him, I'll say good day. Yeah. I think it's just the media is just. Yeah, Australian media is probably top yeah, the syndrome exactly. up there with uh, England, so I think it's going to... Who did you model your game on as a young kid coming up? Um, no one really. I didn't really you know, model it after anybody. I just wanted to be an all-round player, you know, versatile. I didn't want to just be told to do one thing. Yeah. I didn't just want to be just, you know, put inside the paint and told to, to just score inside. So those guys I admired, you know, a lot of Croatian players, Drazen Petrovic, yeah. probably the greatest European player of all time. I was a guy that I looked up to just because of his work ethic and what he went through to, to get where he got to. What's it like? I mean, you played for Australia too in the Olympics. And what's it like? I mean, do you feel the green and gold patronage there when you go back and play? I mean, you're a professional player, but you still have this urge to go back and play for the green and gold? Oh, definitely. Um, a lot of people would understand, you know, the, the NBA schedule is so uh, vigorous and tough that I can't play in the, the Commonwealth Games because it's during the season. And a lot of people don't understand that, but if I can play in the Olympics and the, and the World Championships, I'm going to be there. But there's nothing like playing for your country. You're not, you're not getting paid. You're just playing for the love of the game and you're playing for the love of representing your country. So I think there's nothing better than putting on green and gold. In, in a way, it's better than playing for your, for your pro team just because guys take it a bit more seriously. A bit more seriously because you're not playing for money. You know, it's not a, it's not a business. It's more just playing for heart. You know. The Rams and uh, we wish you all the best in the box this season. Thank you very much.